Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, we all have heard about cancers. Cancers account for one third of uh, deaths in the world, and they are leading co uh, cause of death after or along with cardiac disease or accidents. And today we will discuss about genetic basis of cancers, how cancers are caused by genetic changes, familial cancer with specific reference to hereditary breast and ovarian cancer. Cancers are fundamentally genetic diseases. What I mean to say is all cancer tumors or tissues if you take we find genetic changes in them. We all know cancers by cancers we mean those neoplasias virulent forms of neoplasia which can invade the surrounding tissue or which can metastasize and we have a small subgroup of hereditary cancers as well as a large group of sporadic cancers. I will tell the difference between these two when I discuss subsequent slides. And if you see the practice of oncology or medicine, several genetic tests have come up, several genomic tools have come up to diagnose and to select the drugs for management of the diseases. Cancer treatment often is now based on the genotypes of the tumors or genotypes of the particular individuals and prevention and care can be taken uh, undertaken if we know specific cause or specific genetic defect. If you see genetic basis of cancer or what we need to understand from genetic uh, from genetics point of view about cancer is we have several cancer genes. Okay. So, we have something called uh, driver genes and passenger genes. Okay. Driver genes are the genes which show changes which show pathogenic variations or which show mutations for development of cancers. In driver genes we have two groups of diseases one is activated oncogene and the second group is tumor suppressor gene. Ag oncogenes are uh, normal genes which are present in cells for normal growth and survival and that is their major function. When they get mutated they become proto oncogene. They st then stimulate proliferation and inhibit uh, apoptosis in an uncontrolled manner. Normally, growth refers to proliferation regulated growth and when we have cancers, we have unregulated proliferation and apoptosis or the cell death is inhibited in a way that a cell which has mutation in an activated oncogene becomes tumorous. The second group is tumor suppressor genes which are required for maintenance of chromosomes and DNA integrity in normal individuals. They usually remove normal regulatory controls on uh, cell growth when they get mutated and then slowly we get mutations accumulated and we have development of tumors. This figure summarizes the genetic basis of cancer. So, we have as I have told earlier we have activated oncogenes which are on proto oncogenes where the mutations either somatic, somatic in the sense which are present in all the ce uh, cells of the body and inherited mutations which so, uh, uh, sorry I meant somatic mutations are present in the human soma in different organs or different tissues and inherited mutations are present in all parts of our body and only single mutated allele is sufficient to cause cancers in activated oncogene. Whereas, in tumor suppressor genes we need two alleles for disease to happen because they are recessive at the cellular level. We have driver genes or driver mutations which initiate cancer and then we have passenger mutations or genes where mutations get accumulated for example, mutation in gene A, gene B, gene C and then slowly the cell becomes tumorous, invades surrounding tissues 
and metastasizes and then we have uh, vascular changes happening to support nutrition for the tumorous cells. If we see uh, the tumor initiation progression, gain of function mutation in proto oncogene cause initiation of the tumor or it can be chromosome translocation or loss of function of both alleles in a tumor suppressor gene. These three mechanisms usually initiate cancer and these are called driver mutations. And tumor progression, the tumor increases in size, invades surrounding tissues and uh, metastasizes to other organs through accumulation of adi additional genetic damage in driver genes which can be mutations or epigenetic alterations and altered expression of the genes that promote vascularization or local invasion or metastasis. This is just in gist about how cancers are caused by genetic alteration. You take any tissue, there are several genetic changes, probably we know several driver genes and we might still have several driver genes yet to be discovered. And mutations which accumulate throughout the development or growth of the tumor account for its aggression and metastasis and finally, leading to invasion of almost all the systems and causing death. If we see uh, cancers in families, some families have higher incidence of cancer, it can be due to several reasons. One can be it, uh, one can be Mendelian pattern of inheritance as we will be discussing, it may be breast cancer or colon cancer and where we get inheritance of single mutant gene with high penetrance. It can be dominant as in multiple endocrinal neoplasia uh, where we get mutations inherited, it appears dominant in the pedigree and with very high penetrance or it can be cancer predisposition syndromes or cancers often are multifactorial in the families we get several common genes and they share the same same environment and they might get familial cancers. So, familial cancer need not be uh, due to some single etiology, it can be a Mendelian cancer or it can be familial cancer predisposition syndrome or it can be multifactorial aggregating in the same family. As we see in several common hereditary cancer syndromes they account for less than 5 percent of all patients with cancer. So, we when we say familial it is only 5 percent of the cancers are familial 95 percent of them are sporadic. Genetic testing and counseling can be offered in a specific manner for all hereditary cancer syndromes. We have hereditary cancer syndromes due to mutations in activated oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes. The best example for activated oncogene is mutation in red gene which causes multiple endocrine uh, adenomatosis type 2, where children develop medullary carcinoma of thyroid and pheochromocytoma. This is one of the best examples. I will discuss briefly about this condition later. And tumor suppressor genes, we have several examples like retinoblastoma, familial adenomatosis polyposis, fawn hippel lindau syndrome, familial breast and ovarian cancer, Lynch syndrome and leaf syndrome. We have several pediatric genetic conditions like xeroderma pigmentosum, ataxia telangiectasia, Fanconi anemia and Bloom syndrome which have cancer as one of their clinical features. So, these are pediatric cancer syndromes that might lead to what we call a familial cancer, but actually they have a syndrome, they have a um, disease which manifests in several organs, but cancer is one of the common features of this condition which they get over several period, uh, years slowly. If we see multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2, the mutation in red oncogene which usually codes for the protein dimerizes spontaneously even in the absence of a ligand. In normal uh, cells after binding of the ligand, the protein dimerizes and activates uh, a cascade of reactions through addition of phosphate and then several molecules finally, leading to suppression of apoptosis and stimulate proliferation. But in cancer when there is a mutation in red gene this becomes automatic or spontaneous even without binding of ligand cancer is initiated. 
I need to highlight two issues here germline mutations and somatic mutation. Germline we refer when is, which is present in the zygote after soon after the fertilization and is present in all the cells that is called germline mutation. Somatic mutation is something which is acquired during one's lifetime in any organ or any tissue and it is not present in all the cells of the body. Why I am telling this is to explain the two hit theory or two hit hypothesis. In Mendelian cancers where we have a person individual carrying the gene and the mutation transmits to his or her offspring as you can see in the left hand side the father has transmitted the genetic defect to the daughter who in turn has transmitted it to her two offsprings. So, germline mutations are transmitted like this and usually when we get a second hit when both the alleles are mutated then we get multiple tumors bilateral and early onset. So, in Mendelian cancers one mutation is inherited and the second mutation is somatic or acquired this is called Nudson's two hit hypothesis and the tissue develops or the cell develops becomes cancers. Whereas, in sporadic there is no inherited mutation both the mutations are acquired during one's lifetime. So, by chance if it happens in the same cell the cell becomes malignant. So, we need two hits and these are usually rare and sporadic and usually single tumors unilateral and later in onset. Sporadic cancers are more common in and Mendelian uh, cancers are rare they account only for 5 percent, but remember Mendelian cancers have multiple tumors bilateral early onset as compared to uh, sporadic which are single tumors unilateral and usually later in onset. This is Nudson's two hit hypothesis. Okay. Now, this slide illustrates two hits in retinoblastoma the R B 1 gene you can see here on the left side there is R B mutation in the retinoblastoma gene the other one is normal gene it the second hit can be something like epigenetic silencing or of the second allele as we, is, you see in the first. Uh, set of chromosomes or it can be mutation in the second allele or somatic recombination loss or and duplication or just chromosome loss where there is something called loss of uh, heterozygosity where both alleles appear to have mutation or have mutation and this is how two, two hit hypothesis is explained in situation like retinoblastoma. I have taken hereditary breast and ovarian cancer as an illustration to tell you how familial cancers are manifested, how they are investigated, how they are managed, how they are counseled. When should you suspect hereditary breast and ovarian cancer that will be the first question which we will address subsequently and understand the genetic basis of hereditary cancer, understand genetic testing for breast cancer and how do we of, uh, do genetic counseling for hereditary breast and ovarian cancer will be the topic for my discussion in the second half of this presentation. BRCA1 and BRCA2 popularly called BRCA1 and BRCA2 these are two tumor suppressor genes they need two mutations to become inactive it is. So, you understood two hit hypothesis in my earlier discussion then you know it is two hit which becomes uh, it is two hits are necessary for the development of breast cancer. It if it is a sporadic breast cancer, two mutations are acquired in one's lifetime, and if it is inherited, one is already present in germline, and the second one is acquired in the breast tissue. If it is inherited breast cancer, the age of onset is very early, and it is bilateral, and it is multifocal, and then we call familial because family member may be affected only 5 percent to 10 percent of breast cancers in it it does not it means that out of all breast cancers only 5 to 10 percent have mutations in BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene within the germ line whereas, rest of them are sporadic and both the mutations are acquired in the particular tumor and usually it is unilateral later in the age of onset. Among several breast cancer genes these are the not the only genes BRCA1 and BRCA2 are the most significant ones and about 5 to 10 percent of all breast and ovarian cancers are directly attributed to inherited genetic variations in BRCA1 and BRCA2. 
do all individuals with BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations have risk of hereditary breast and ovarian cancer? No, this about 46 to 87 percent of the women with BRCA1 and 38 to 84 percent of women with BRCA2 variants develop breast and ovarian cancer during their lifetime. This means to say BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations have reduced penetrance, it is not 100 percent. If somebody has the mutation, they need not develop breast cancer all the time that means the penetrance is reduced, it, it is less than 100 percent and all women do not get breast cancer in their lifetime. BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes demonstrate few more characteristics that is pleiotropy, they can affect other tissues, it can be breast, ovary or other soft tissues sometimes, rare cancers can happen in BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations, I will be showing them. And the expression may be variable, some can be mild, some may be very uh, highly virulent, multiple tumors, multiple sites, severity of metastasis, everything can vary from person to person. When to suspect hereditary breast and ovarian cancer? There are guidelines for uh, this is uh, one li such list when, you, when should you suspect any individual with personal or family history of breast cancer diagnosed at or before the age of uh, 50 years, ovarian cancer, um, pr multiple primary breast cancers either in one or both breasts, male breast cancer, triple negative breast cancer particularly when diagnosed before the age of 60 years, the combination of pancreatic cancer and or prostate cancer with breast cancer and or ovarian cancer, breast cancer diagnosed at any age in an individual with Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry, two or more relatives with breast cancer under the age of 50 three or more relatives with breast cancer at any age, a previously identified BRCA1 and BRCA2 pathogenic variant in the family. This is when we should suspect a familial breast or ovarian cancer syndrome. Remember hereditary breast and ovarian cancer is more likely if it is early age of onset, we say less than 40 years or 45 years and bilateral multiple tumors on one side, related cancers, family history and male breast cancer we should think of hereditary breast and ovarian cancer. There are several other genetic conditions with breast uh, where breast cancer is a feature which include leaf from any syndrome, Cowden syndrome, hereditary diffuse gastric cancer, attack settle injectasia, pute Jagger syndrome, Bloom syndrome, Lynch syndrome and Werner syndrome. These are syndromes with several other manifestations and breast cancer is one of them. We have mutations in other genes other than BRCA1 and BRCA2. This pie diagram shows a list of genes, but they are rare as compared to BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes, but they can come like familial breast cancer. We should be very careful when we do not get mutations in BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes. What do you know about other breast cancer genes? Genetic changes in other non-BRCA genes are rarer, but can also contribute to the risk of breast cancer or ovarian cancer. They have different penetrance, uh, so we can classify them as uh, highly penetrant genes which includes BRCA1, BRCA2 and TP53 and P10 genes, where if you have a mutation the chance of having a uh, breast cancer is very high and then we have moderately penetrant genes and we have low penetrant genes. Even if somebody has a mutation in these genes, it is very rare that the individual will develop breast cancer. How to test hereditary breast and ovarian cancer? I will discuss about testing as well as counseling. So, if we look into the genes, these are two large genes, BRCA1 and BRCA2 are very large genes with 24 and 27 exons respectively and it is not easy to uh, sequence them. So, we use different techniques and we need to understand the mutation types. Point mutations or small deletions and insertion are the most common types of mutations which are detected by sequencing. They account for 80 percent of the mutation types and large deletions and duplication remember we should not miss account for 10 percent and we need a separate technique. So, how to establish a diagnosis? Identification of a heterozygous germline pathogenic variant in BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene on molecular testing uh, genetic testing in the proband. This is for familial cancers. If you test blood sample of a sporadic cancer you will not get any mutation, but if you test the tumor tissue you will get a mutation in BRCA1 and BRCA2 or uh, several other genes, but remember for familial cancer it is germline that means it is present in all cells. You can take a blood sample or even saliva sample and test BRCA1 or BRCA2 and we should find a pathogenic variant. 
it can be done in several ways. The most common or most popular is testing BRCA1 and BRCA2 in a gene panel by sequencing which can be done in several ways and deletion duplication analysis. This is how it should be done and we now have multi gene panels as well. Sequencing analysis or sequence analysis detects variants that are benign means which do not cause the disease likely benign of uncertain significance uh, likely pathogenic or pathogenic these are the American College of Medical Genetics classifications and pathogenic may, variants may include small intergenic deletions, insertions, missense, nonsense and flysate variants and exon or whole uh, gene deletions and duplications are not detected by sequencing we need another technique. So, the sequencing is just to know the alphabets of our genetic code or the gene you can see on the left hand side the structure of the DNA and the right hand side how it is deciphered A, T, G, C and the variants you can see in the heterozy uh, heterozygous variant in one in the chromatogram uh, which that is lower uh, we can see two sequences overlap and that is how we detect a variation by Sanger sequencing. But as I said this is a large gene these two are large genes and we have something called next generation sequencing where we capture all the coding regions of the BRCA1 and BRCA2 and compare it uh, sequence it and analyze in a very uh, complex set of experiments, but these are all automated and they are highly uh, efficient in detecting uh, variations in BRCA1 and BRCA2. This can be uh, th these are the most commonly done tests for BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene and that is how sequencing should be done. And gene, gene targeted deletion duplication analysis detects intergenic deletions or duplications which account for 10 percent you should as if we remember and we can use qPCR, long range PCR, MLPA that is the most popular method because it is less expensive or microarray which can be used for analysis of deletions and duplications. You can see this one uh, MLP experiment where you can see the blue peaks are missing in few exons suggesting that particular exon is deleted. So, standard genetic testing for hereditary breast and ovarian cancer should test the proband for BRCA1 and BRCA2 in a gene panel which should include both sequence analysis as well as deletion duplication analysis. And for relatives of the proband just family specific germline pathogenic variant can be tested. You can just sequence or you can test the deletion duplication which is present in one of the family member for testing other family members. What kind of test results are expected? We sometimes get no mutation that means there is no variation in BRCA1 and BRCA2 this is called negative test result. Remember it is if you have just sequenced a deletion duplication can be missed and even then when you do both if you do not get a mutation it can be that it is not a BRCA1 and BRCA2 related disease mutation may be in another gene or it may be non hereditary breast cancer as well. We can get benign variations in the gene we compare normal individuals or databases to say whether this is benign likely benign and then we have several tools to predict whether a sequence variation can cause disease and we look into the database. Uh, whether a particular variation is already reported or not in other individuals with the breast cancer and then we say likely pathogenic and pathogenic which are confirmatory test results and whether the functional consequences of the variation is already known that is what also we test and we categorize them as uh, the variants in BRCA1 and BRCA2 as benign likely benign variant of unknown significance because we do not know what it is and likely pathogenic and pathogenic where which confirm that uh, disease or the BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutation in the proband and the familial hereditary breast and ovarian cancer. A small word about hereditary secondary findings we if you use some gene uh, panels or large gene panels we can get some uh, findings which may not be directly related to hereditary breast and ovarian cancer. What are the implications of a positive test? If someone tests positive, it usually confirms a disease, but we should also remember if somebody has BRCA1 mutation, the chance of having a breast cancer is 46 to 87 percent in their lifetime and 38 to 84 percent in BRCA2 in their lifetime. Secondary 
second primary breast cancer can happen, ovarian cancer can happen, males can have breast cancer if they have a mutation in BRCA1 and BRCA2, you can see it is more likely if somebody has BRCA2 mutation, prostate cancers in male, pancreatic cancers and melanomas also there is some increased risk if somebody has BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutation. What is a multigene panel? It includes BRCA1 and BRCA2 and even some other genes of interest and genes included in the panel and diagnostic sensitivity of the testing used for each gene vary from lab to lab and over time. Some multigene panels may, may include genes not associated with the condition, thus clinicians need to determine which multigene panel provides the best opportunity to identify the genetic cause of the condition and at the most reasonable cost while limiting the secondary or probably not desired findings, you might find something else if you are having a wide multigene panel. It can be sequence analysis, deletion duplication analysis or even mostly it is next generation uh, sequencing based analysis. Another aspect is uh, counseling for anybody who undergoes genetic tests for BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations or hereditary cancer need to have a pre-test counseling and post-test counseling. We need to tell why this test is being done how is this done, what are the expected results, we need to tell there may be some benign variants, variants of unknown significance and sometimes there may be a secondary finding and what is the yield of test, even if somebody has a breast cancer, do you get the mutation all the times or you do not and need for further testing, there may be some other tests you might have to know, rarely you might have to test the parents to know whether it is new or de novo mutations and what are the implications in terms of clinical management for himself, for herself, for the family members. These are all uh, very confidential issues, so we need to be very careful while counselling and we need to know what are the implications for other family members, brothers, sisters, mother or even the daughters and what are the benefits. Do you really have significant medical benefit by uh, testing or by doing this testing including psychological that is what we need to consider an adolescent or adult lady who might get uh, depressed if she tests positive or she might get depressed if her brother or mother tests positive. So, these are the issues which you need to consider. Again post test counselling when you get the result that has to be done for each family or each individual who has undergone this test, what are the implications, how they should manage if it is a positive test and what it means if it is a negative test and there is no mutation. I would like to end this session by referring you to two very nice uh, resources for further reading on BRCA1 and BRCA2, one is gene reviews and another one is NCC and clinical practice guidelines which is extensive, some of the information which I have provided today are from these two references, thank you.